Oh, good evening everyone and welcome to another edition of the Weekend Wrap brought to you by Procast of course. Uh, my camera's not working at the moment so for those on a uh, watching on YouTube, uh, I apologise you won't get to see my face today. <laughs> if, it, uh, if it starts working a little bit later I'll... Uh, I'll get it up and running, I guess, but uh, right now uh, it's not. But thankfully, my two cohorts in here, my two partners in crime are here. And uh, g'day to Nikki and Mac. How are you going, Nikki and Mac? I'm going well. And uh, I'm going extra well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good. Um, better than me, obviously. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, we've got the usual subjects in uh, in chat as well. It's going to be a fairly short and sharp um, uh, podcast tonight. Uh, we're just wrapping up the trade week. Uh, we've obviously got a couple of weeks before the draft on December the 7th, I think it is. is it the 7th? We, we always say it's going to be short, short and sharp and it ends up two hours plus. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is that December 7th is the date for everything, which is supposed to be the main draft the pre-season draft and the rookie draft that's right yep everything all in one night this year um so Yay. we lose well yes and no we lose the advantage of having uh a night to uh, work out what we're going to do with uh, our second round picks but uh, nevertheless that's okay um i think it's better all in one night too in fact it drags on so much it drives me crazy at times You'd think, though, oh. Fee, that, that there would be a little bit of a break between rounds one and two when they run through the uh, the, the uh, stars that have made round one. And, uh, oh, look, they could be. So uh, there'd be enough time before if somebody's really desperate to get hold of pick 22 uh, yeah. to burst their boiler and do it. If they really yeah. want to do it, they can do it. Yeah. Now, for and those uh, listening on Spreaker, uh, yes, uh, you'll notice that there are ads on Spreaker. Um They've started monetizing the uh, audio, and I had the option uh, by default is on, which I only realized last week. Um, so I hope it doesn't annoy people. Uh, it just trucks a couple of extra dollars into the Growcast kitty. So uh, unless everyone really objects to it, I'm just going to keep it on. I think it's only one at the start, one at the end, I think. So, uh, but if it comes too much of a pain in the ass, then uh, uh, we, can, we can switch it off. So, uh, I guess look, let's let's just round up uh, the the trade period for us. I mean, we had the flurry, obviously, which we covered last week with uh, Brad Crouch and the free agency situation. Um, but really, aside from that, um, it was relatively quiet for the Crows. Well, extremely quiet, really. Um, we obviously had the Hately situation and. For once, we didn't blink, and I was absolutely delighted because... Oh, um, I disagree with that, Mac. I think we did blink. Well... We blinked I, a couple of times. I, well, no, no, I'm sorry. Let's go... I'm talking about Hately alone here. Um, yeah. But if we, there were three things. I actually got a $150 voucher from uh, Chanel's from 5AA because I, I suggested three things that I thought that the Crows should do. And the first one was to trade up in the draft... Um, and I, you, and you'd be pleased, Fane, that we actually have got a second round for 2021 as part of our trading. So I think that that was a definite win. Yes. Uh, now explain that one properly. That was from Melbourne, right? That was from Melbourne. Yes. Um, that was so. I would. Well, I, in terms of that, they have made some grounds in that respect because that sets us up to the next second round pick next year. Which is going to be a very good draft by all It'll be handy. accounts. Yep. Uh, the the second suggestion I made was that they pay nothing for Hately. That they offer something that's outrageous in the terms in t in the eyes of GWS, and they did that uh, because GWS would not accept pick forty, and in the end, <laughs> they were happy with take pick nothing. So that one came to fruition. The one mm. I'm really annoyed about was I did suggest that they should. Uh, I knew that Collingwood had massive, this is over a week ago, they had massive pressure financially and that we should go up to and get Phillips, a 24-year-old wingman that runs like crazy in both forward and back and offer pick 54 and take his full salary for that year and I had no doubt that Collingwood would do a salary dump. Now, we didn't apparently didn't do that. Hawthorne did and they got him for pick 65. So 
I am disappointed that we didn't do that because I think he would have been an asset to the team uh, and a big advantage for us to accelerate our progress next year. But overall, I would say, and as we were talking off here, I think we came out at about 50-50. Yeah, what do you think, Nick? I think the 2021 picks, that was a good move um, and that's what we needed to do. I would have been interested to see if there was more, we were trying to do some more around picks at all because I think that's where I was a little bit more interested, um, particularly to get into next year. So it'll, it will be interesting to see what happens on draft night as to whether there's some trading or things that go on there. Um, I, I think... It was interesting that we only offered pick 40 and that was it for Haightley. And for once, we just kind of went, yeah, okay. We know we can get him in pre-season draft because we actually had a strong hand in that way. Um, and we've got him for essentially nothing. So I think that's a win. Um, but I think there was a little... GWS, I think that was all held up around the Cameron and what they got for Cameron was just like, well, they don't need any more. Well, um, also the fact that it went to the last second. Yeah. So I, I I, think that's what was going on there. It was waiting for the Cameron deal to fall through to see what they had and then what they would be willing to accept. And yeah. because that happened, it was just like, yep, okay. It'll, we'll just yeah. go to the preseason dance. Fine, fine. We, we, we don't need him. We've got three first round picks. Bloody hell, Geelong. Yeah, but, uh, they, they, they probably would have used it anyhow, Nikki. No, no. So I think they were just like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so that, that was, so I wouldn't actually say that was a win so much that was a, yeah, that happened. That's okay, kind of thing. I'm was just, it was such a weird trade period. And it's just hard to know how to feel about it. But I, I think our problem came down to with what was happening first off with Crouch, which you guys discussed last week, and that just kind of made me, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I was a bit kind of, eh, about the rest of the trade period, really. Now, something very interesting is going I have no idea what's going on tonight, but uh, we're not streaming to Facebook or YouTube or Twitch. None of that's working, so... Uh, I'm recording the stream, so uh, for those that want to uh, actually look at us later, um, the stream will be up, but uh, I have no idea it's uh, got me stuff. So anyway, um, we'll just carry on. It's only uh, only sound at this stage. Um, look, I wasn't over... I, th I was happy with the way the Hately thing panned out because uh, we're obviously going to take him in the PSD and uh, that seems to be tied away. Um, GWS don't seem too fussed um, I think a lot of it was influenced by the fact that GWS was so tied up with the Cameron deal um, that went basically to the death knock um, you know but uh, the reports were that we offered up a, a few different scenarios to GWS and I was a bit surprised that we were so pro proactive in trying to uh, 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 give them something that they might want because I really didn't see the point to be honest but anyway that that worked worked out for the best um we facilitated as mac has said earlier um another second round pick for 2021 which should be good i i think uh, the action for the crows starts between now and, and draft night uh, obviously you can trade draft picks all the way up until the pick so right now there's probably uh, uh a few calculators going and a few heads scratching at the moment at the crows and other afl clubs working out uh, how they can work them, their way either up the 2020 draft order or into 2021. So uh, there's a couple of picks at play there. Uh, obviously, the Western Bulldogs um, pick didn't pan out uh, um, so much, but there's a couple still there. I think Sydney's pick might be gettable, Mac. What do you reckon? Well, I'd certainly be targeting that one. Um, I mean, I put a a trade in big footy which of course they howled down by all the months all and sundry and i'm talking from that i would trade pick one from a position of strength and i would only do that if i could trade to get pick two from north melbourne and pick three from sydney and the machinations that go with, with all that now i'm not going to re repeat all the details of that and and i would be happy to fall pick one if i could get picks two and three and lose some of our picks along the way um 
because that way we would get a, a class forward, we would get a class mid, and then we could have a couple other picks to, to pick the rest of them up. So uh, that's a, that's the way I see it. We will definitely. I'm sure, I have no doubt that we will be active in trading our picks and trying to get up as high as possible. Um, whether whether you know my 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 might well be fancy land that they might not start, but um, look, you won't know until you try Fane, and you certainly would try Sydney. I'd even try North Melbourne. You know, uh, you can have pick one, but we want your uh, and look. There's just, there's all other picks associated with it, but basically we'd end up with two and eleven. Um, so because there is a big drop in draft point between one and two, so. Um, I, I'd be open to trading it as long as we improve our position and don't disadvantage ourselves. Nick. Uh, Nick doesn't care. Um, <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just trying to think. Um, it, it would be interesting, but it would be interesting what we'd have to give up a bit later to get that pick from Sydney um, and what else we'd get back from North Melbourne. Well, the thing is, Ricky, we've got a fistful of draft picks, and you know, I'll I'll give you we the estimations of it all later. But we've got two, four, six, eight, nine, no, two, four, five, eight draft picks, counting pick eighty and pick eighty. If you say pick eighty is uh, put away for Hately, then you've got. Uh, we'll either take four or five. If we took five, we've still got spare fifty-four and sixty-six. Uh, so. Obviously, we're going to do some trading to try and turn these into tighter, closer, shorter, uh, better draft picks. Yeah, but you've got to have a willing party um, in order to do that, yeah. uh, Mac. And, uh, you know, everyone's got the same um, the same uh, objective. So we've got to work out how we're going to make it worthwhile um, for those other clubs to actually want to get involved. Otherwise, uh, you know, forget about it. Right, you mentioned Sydney. What was, what was your thoughts there, Fane? Well, only that, um, and I've still, I'll have steal this one from Peter J um, in, as a general comment. Um, assuming we want to take Tilthorpe instead of um, McDonald, we can basically hold an auction for McDonald uh, with pick one. So yes. um, so you've got a situation where um, maybe an Essendon or a Sydney or, or North Melbourne for that matter um, or, uh, you know, someone further down the line uh, is looking for Logan McDonald, a Hawthorne, um, and we can, uh, we can basically use our advantage at pick one to basically auction him off to the highest bidder. Um, and that may allow us then to get back into um, um, uh, Holland, because at the moment Holland is off the table for us. Correct. And that was exactly what I was trying to do with the suggested uh, trade that I put up on uh, both Twitter and uh, Big Footy. Uh, it was light on Twitter and hated on Big Footy, so uh, make of that what you will. Yeah, well, I mean... It really depends on who our targets are. If our, if our target is Logan, if we're set on Logan, then, uh, you know, all bets are off in that regard. But uh, it wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind betting that, um, you know, they might see some value in take, if they can work a deal where they can get Tilthorpe and Holland, they might actually think that that's a better outcome than just getting McDonald at one. Yes, uh, and, I, and they may well be thinking along those lines, Fee. Um, the problem, the only problem I've got is that uh, on paper, not just on paper, I'm just watching what McDonald has done this year, um, he, he, you'd have to think he's going to be a very, very good AFL footballer and a very, very good forward. We haven't had one of those for a very, very long time. The dangers of taking him... There are dangers yeah. with taking him in the sense that, uh, A, he's a Collingwood supporter and they'd be raiding us. Uh, and also on top of that, he's a Western Australian and those two clubs would be trying to raid us as well. So there may be great difficulty in keeping him. Whereas if you, if you take Tilthorpe and uh, 
and could do, couple that with Hollands, then I think you, your dead set's um, safe with Tilthorpe, um, obviously, South Australian boy. And, and Hollands is, uh, is a Crow supporter and would like to be taken by us. So if we could get that situation, it would be a good result. I mean, every, pl- every kid in the draft is a flight risk to a certain degree. I mean, every kid in the draft, in my opinion. So, I mean, whilst I agree, you take it into consideration. And for those watching on YouTube and Twitch, which is now online, I've just put the indicative draft order on uh, on there now for your edification. Um, but, you know, I think... Logan McDonald's uh, mother works uh, lives in South Australia. Um, so there's just as many ties to South Australia, mate, as there is to Melbourne or, or Western Australia. Um, so I, I, I'd i take the punt. If if they want Logan, then I'd take the punt. The, the, the key is, do they want Logan enough to let go of um, Hollands or do they think that Tilthorpe is good enough um, and work out a way that they can get Tilthorpe and Hollands in the door? I think that's what they'll be angling for. And if Hollands is as good as he's made out to be, and, well, sorry, if he's as good as he was before he had his ACL, um, he would be absolutely what we need in the midfield. There's no doubt about that. And now that Brad Crouch is gone, our midfield, which was never our major strength, uh, will be even weaker. So um, we do need a quality mid. There's no doubt about that. I know I keep banging on about this. But Hollands is not yet a midfielder, Macca. He's not yet a midfielder. If you want to take a bona fide midfielder, the best midfielder in the draft, arguably, arguably, with proven runs on the board, is Will Phillips. Now, potentially, Hollands is the best midfielder in the draft, but right now, he's the best medium-sized forward in the draft who can run through the midfield. We've well, got enough of them. But you have to say everyone, everybody in your draft is potentially uh, because, you, you know, and there's a no, some... no, I'm talking about where he's played his football, Macca. I understand that. but He's he hasn't played his football in the midfield. He has played midfield. At, no, at he time. hasn't played midfield, Macca. He has not played mid- any meaningful minutes in the midfield at a high level. And he's when he's playing. I mean, he's playing his tack, uh, TAC. What he, you say he never played midfield? No, he does. He's not a midfielder. He's potentially a midfielder. The one of the key. I mean, he didn't play TAC Cup. Remember, because there was no TAC Cup this year. No, that's that's year. I'm talking about in 2019. No, so well, he wasn't playing in the midfield. He was playing as a medium-sized forward who would occasionally run up the ground. But he, he has not played as a starting midfielder in any meaningful way in any high-level competition, ever. Well, if I concede that to you, because I don't really know, because I was under I was the impression that he had. Well, uh, I've, but, said this, um, I've said this for, like, two months now, and you're not, you haven't taken any notice of me. <laughs> well, only because I believed otherwise. <laughs> But, well, I don't... That, but that's because the media is spooking him up as a potential midfielder, so they say he is. Where, yeah. but and most of those journalists, journalists who are doing that actually don't watch that level that closely. And we've also had the fact that this year they haven't played. I mean, look, I'll qualify that... by saying that there that he is very much a, a potential uh, gun midfielder. He's got all the attributes. Uh, the minutes that he has played in the midfield, he's looked okay. Um, but he he is not... Um, he should not be classified as a midfielder in this draft the same way as a Tanner Bruin or a Will Phillips or a Nathan O'Driscoll or, you know, uh, all, all the other bona fide mids. He, Hollands at this stage cannot be put in that class because he hasn't got the minutes to show for it. Well... Uh, look, you might be 100% right, Fiend, but, but I think that the long-term goal would be to turn him into a midfielder. Well, yeah, yeah of course, but the long-term goal for Wayne Miller was to turn him into a midfielder as well. 
and that's not going to work. Look, okay, let's move on then because we should talk around this forever. But um, well, no, no, no. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that nobody's doubting Holland's talent and ability, and the chances are very high that he will make a, a very good, if not exceptional, midfielder. Right. So I'm not disputing that one bit, not one bit. I, I just want to make sure that people are are aware that at this stage you couldn't call him a midfielder because he just hasn't got the runs on the board and this year was very much about finding out had they played finding out whether he could run through the midfield and first of all he did his acl and then we had COVID, and and that all got knocked on the head anyway so um you know so he is untried he is untested um the signs are very very positive but the other thing with Hollands is you don't know how he's going to come back from his ACL. You don't know if he's going to have complications. Uh, young Bruin has had comp- complications following knee injury. Um, you know, o- often young kids bounce back pretty well from ACLs. But it's, it's there are a few question marks about Holland that um, I think uh, get swept under the carpet with all the media hype. And um, I just think it's important when people are making their assessment about who Adelaide should take, that they take those things into consideration. Yeah, look, and, and it may well be that we don't intend to take... And if, if we take McDonald, we're obviously not uh, uh, intending to take Holland. And I was just looking... Really, I'll just do what PJ has typed, which I think is a, not a bad draft team, actually. Uh, he's got McDonald. O'Driscoll, Broon, Holter, Borlase. I thought if we ended up with a hand like that, I think we'd be pretty happy with that. Well, you know, again, Mac, if you've been listening to me for the last month and a half, you'd have known that that's pretty I much know you've been pumping up O'Driscoll. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have. I know you have. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I read it out, mate, so you could, your head could glow a little bit. Uh, and it did. Um, look, uh, I don't know about Broon. I don't know about Bruin. He's got some issues with that with that knee. Uh, I would. I, I'm very. Ca- I, I like Polter. I really do. We spoke about him last week. But uh, I, yeah, I, I, I really like Polter. But I also like Power from Sturt. Um, if you want a bona fide ball m- magnet who will just continue to get the agate, uh, a bit like Sam Walsh, probably not the class of Sam Walsh, but similar sort of player, uh, very much an accumulator, but uses the ball quite well. Um, if we can swing it to get Polter and Power, um, I think we would have done very well. Um, and interesting. And Borlase is a must, I think. Borlase is a must because he's got to be uh, the, the long term uh, full back for us, you know. Because, um, well, I mean, we've got can... Geordie Butts there. Um, look, I don't disagree. I think Borlase uh, late in the season really came on and probably brought himself into contention. Uh, a little bit more strongly than otherwise. Um, I'm I interested. Like PJ, yeah, I'm interested. PJ didn't uh, mention Newchurch or Edwards. Um, my gut feel is that Edwards will nominate for the draft. I don't think he'll nominate Father Son, um, and I don't think the Crows will be terribly disappointed with that. I think they probably in their discussion said, "Look, you know, take your chances in the draft, uh, and if you don't get picked up, we might have a rookie spot for you." Um, but I don't think that we'll... T- I could be wrong, but that's just my gut feel. Um, and also, uh, I think... I- I'm just not quite sold on Tariq Newchurch just yet. Um, you know, it o- oozes um, X Factor. But uh, just with list sizes the way they are, um, and he hasn't really set the world on fire... Um, I think we might play safe with New Church. Yeah, just talking about list sizes, the officially uh, that's come out for me, and uh, basically the minimum you can have is 37 players uh, with 36 on the main list and one rookie. Yep. And the, max, and the maximum you can have is 44 with 38 on the main list and six rookies. So basically your main list can be between 36 and 38. I think we'll be going to 38, um, and that still leaves us with the potential for six rookies. I'm working on the theory that Keys is still a, a rookie he, because he had a contract extension, not a promotion to the main list, uh, and we've also got Strawn. So that's two of our rookie list positions taken up. 
So um, well, I'm not sure about that, that Mac, because he got a two year extension, didn't he? Two year, yeah, to his current contract. I don't, I don't think you can go. And he's for a rookie. A th- yeah, but I don't know whether you can go for three years as a rookie. Can you? Yes, you can. That's the maximum. Three years, is it consecutively? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And my 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 check for Collingwood uh, is in that position. He has to be promoted to the right. main okay. this this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So now what that tells me is if we're going to have we're going to take five. We, we've got that we take Hately plus mm. we're having five picks. And I think that PJ has actually listed five players. I think he's got it spot on that we will be taking five. The only way that we won't be taking five is if we manage to uh, draft ourselves by using a lot of these draft picks into a much, much higher position and we only ended up with, with four left. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, it's it's not impossible for it to happen. Um, no, it's not. Not impossible. Yeah. Uh, obviously... Uh, PJ's listed the five there, but we've got to take Hately into account there as well. Um, no, no, he's on top of. On top of, we've, yeah. We've currently, we've currently got 32 plus yep. uh, two rookies. Yeah. So we can go to 30. So we've got we six spots. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hately t- so Hately takes one, leaves five. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that look, uh, that's probably pretty similar to my read, Macca. Um I'll be interested. I, I have a feeling that we might try and do a couple of deals, but my, my impression is that it might be difficult uh, given who's uh, amongst us in the top half a dozen of the draft. I, it, it just seems to me a little bit... I don't, I don't see how we're going to be able to work a situation where we get two high picks. Um, you know, uh, if, we, if we trade uh, with Sydney, it still only gives us... Um, you know, three and nine, and I, you you don't either Tilthorpe or or Hollands isn't going to drop till nine, so we have to bring up, uh, you know, that number nine pick up a bit higher, and I just don't know how we do that, to be honest. Well, to me, there's only uh, the Crows did say they would be open to trading pick one, and they, and as most people who hold pick one say that. And they also add the rider, as long as it's a godfather offer. In other words, it's got to be way over the top, much more than the points are worth. So yeah. to me, that, that only leaves, I would think, two teams and three teams possibly in the running. And that would be uh, North Melbourne, Sydney and Essendon. Now, North I say that because with North Melbourne and Sydney, we still a chance to get uh, one of the, let's say, Tilthorpe, for example. Um, and but and we'd also get a lot a lot more cream on top of that. Um, yeah, but I don't, I say I don't see the point. I don't see the point. The only the only reason that you would do that is if you if you get two picks in the top three, so that you can get Tilthorpe and and Holland. Yeah, how are you going to get two think, picks in the top three? I I don't see it. Happening. I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not. I'm not saying for one moment yeah. that I think it's going to happen. But Abbe to put it out there just in case. And, and the other one potentially would be uh, Essendon with six, seven, and eight. And if you've got those, you could trade possibly a uh, couple of them for uh, pick three or pick two. Um, so just to get yourself an extra pick. But uh, quite frankly, I don't think any of those things will happen. I think the trading will be with picks. 9, 22, 23, 40, 54, 66, and reducing that down to four picks. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, increasing our, our situation. I don't think we'll, we will part with pick 22 under any circumstance because that's the controlling spot for the start of the second round. That's right. Um, and, and, that could, and that could well be traded for a first-round draft pick for next year uh, by somebody who really, really wants to get a player. Yeah, well, I I don't even know how that works. Um, I, I can't like I, I've been banging on about getting into the twenty twenty one draft, but you know everyone wants to get into that draft. So again, um, it would be speculative. You'd probably be dealing with a Fremantle or maybe a North Melbourne, um, well, and it's just well, speculative. Port Adelaide, well, Port Adelaide have done trade away their second and third for next year. And so other and other clubs have done it as well. Even yeah, no, but I'm talking. Really I'm talking about at the pointy end, Mac. You're talking about like in the in the top half to, a dozen. 
Well, I still think that Pick 22 is capable of bringing us a good offer, even though it will be uh, in a much, much shorter period than it would have been. Normally, they've had a day to think about it. But what will happen is the clubs will now, they'll, ha- they'll have lists and they'll have actually stick to those lists and uh, they'll, try, they'll make moves where they see their player potentially going, et cetera. And so that if, if the, one of their players is still uncalled, uh, but they are not close to 22, they'll come out with something. Mm. And that were, might well be their first for next year. So let's quickly talk about um, the uh, NGAs that are involved. So obviously the Western Bulldogs have um, uh, that lad, what's his name again? Ugo uh, Hagen. Ugo Hagen, uh, who uh, is touted as a, a, a top draft pick. Do we think that Adelaide are going to bid on him? Well, we wouldn't have if we got picked there, pick 14. No. If we retain pick one, we will now. Yeah. We will. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. I just wish yeah. Nicky had, just, just, uh, Nick had shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm talking so much today. No, I, I think we will because um, we'll play funny buggers to um, get what we need happening because I, I think that's what what we need to do in the draft is to really stuff up others. Well, it doesn't really stuff up Western Bulldogs. I mean, they they purposely. Uh, I mean, they would have liked to have got a pick for uh, got Dunkley over the line and got a pick from Essendon, uh, which we then could have targeted, which would have been very very handy. Um, but as as it stands with the Western Bulldogs, they're just going to spend their points on on him, and uh, they've done most of their work in the trade period. Yeah, well, they've done done fantastically actually. Uh, they're a big winner. Yes, Collingwood Fire Sale. Yeah. So, uh, no, so they, they won't really care about burning up their uh, picks in no. Google Hagen. They've got them they're very, very well up to now, and he'll be the cream on top of that. So, yeah. And, the, yeah. and, oh, that's the other thing I should say, that it could be a very, very short draft because clubs are only required to take one player this time. That's right. Normally they have to take three, and this time it's only going to be one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look, and I don't think, I, I think we might see less than 60 players taken. Oh, I'm, I'm as, sure that might be, be as low as might be lo- as low as forty, I reckon. And I reckon a lot of and these hence, lads, and hence they're doing sorry, it on one night. Yeah, I reckon a lot of these lads will will uh, renominate next year. Uh, a lot of uh, you know, particularly the Victorian lads that aren't probably in the top half a dozen. Um, they're going to need. Uh, I think they're probably going to expand the uh, the carnival next year to give those guys a run. Um, because they've had you know no footy, no no exposed um, um, performances uh, this year. So I, I reckon you know between forty and fifty, maybe you know probably leaning closer to forty than than fifty. Um, and just just on that theme, remember yeah. we had the discussion a little while ago about how the draft age should be increased, mm. so to actually give them a chance to start uni and everything else. Mm. If that happens. I think this is actually a nice little case study because well, for most of them, they will be either at university or working, etc. whilst juggling um, playing well, football the Victorians will be. It has yeah. been spoken about. It has been spoken about um, lifting the dra- draft age to 19 um, uh, it, within the AFL. So you're right. It could be a bit of a test case. Um you know, but they're going to have to adjust the pathways a little bit. Uh, there's talk about reverting back to an under 17 and under 19 competition, uh, and yep. making the draft age 19. So you're right, Nick. Uh, it could be a, a good little uh, test scenario. But um, look, you know, uh, I think all lies are on the the 2021 draft is going to be massive because not only are you going to have yeah. the kids that miss out this year that get some footy under their belts but you're also going to have all the talent from next year um, and it supposedly was going to be a pretty deep draft anyway um, but you chuck in you know half a dozen kids that might have gone second or third round uh, in a normal draft situation this year and all of a sudden you've got a jam-packed jam-packed uh, draft in 2021 and um, so it's. Yeah, the, I wouldn't say it's a non-event, but I think it, it's probably a. Uh, it's almost like an appetizer for twenty twenty one this year. Although once you add in all the uh, academy players, NGAs, etc., etc., um, 
if every club were to take two clicks, that's 36. It, it, it's certainly get out to 50, and, and it may still get out to 60. So, but the one thing is, is that I, I believe the Players Association have been. Um, remember, there was talk originally that it could be uh, 35 players, and then it got yeah. out to. They got out to 38 plus two rookies. Then it got as far as 40 plus two rookies. I, I think the Players Association have have deliberately been negotiating for an extension of 38 plus the six rookies because of the Victorian players who uh, didn't get the opportunity to show their wares. I think a smart club, and I hope we're a smart club, would be loading up with uh, Victorian players that haven't been taken, that had pretty good two uh, years in 2019 and have uh, physically developed in that time. And uh, I think it's an opportunity using the rookie list to possibly get hold of potentially on hold of players that you wouldn't normally get hold of. Thoughts? It's very speculative, though, Mac. I think drafting any drafting is speculative, and but then, you know it's a situation of opportunity. In other words, um, the more that you've got, the more chance you're likely to get one that's good. Um, mm. And I, and I would say that. At the end, if people aren't going to take that many to draft, say they only take two each, there's going to be a lot of players left over not taken, even from the ones that are available, plus the Victorians. So I would like to see our club go the full six rookies. We've already got two spots filled with keys and yep. drawn. Yep. So that, that leaves us with four. And I, it, well, maybe it's two South Australians, two Victorians, but I'd really like us to fill the whole six rookie spots. Yeah, it's not a bad point, Macca. It can uh, very much be a, a bit of an audition situation. Um, Correct. And you're right, if you do speculate with a couple of those lads that uh, that didn't get a chance to show their wares uh, and may have been pegged as being late developers, um, you know, you might you might grab one that uh, that sticks. Um, Ronan O'Connor, he's on the main list, isn't he? He's not a rookie. Yep. Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, look, I, know about I, know, I, I mentioned him in the chat that I was where I'm annoyed at not being able to see them play in the SNFL this year because he's one I really like the sound of and we mm. got him quite late, really, really nice size and had a bit of speed and everything else with it and um, being the under-18s captain for WA is not, not a bad thing in itself Yeah, um, well, in, that, well in that good little team they had. So I mentioned him and Schoenberg are the two I'm really keen on seeing next year in the AFL, in our midfield. Yeah. Well, I, I know nothing about it, Matty Matchy. Uh, I've never actually seen him play. So. Well, uh, well, as Nick said, he's WA captain in their um, under-18s. They won the championship that year, didn't they, Nick, I think? They did indeed, and that was yeah. described as one of their best teams ever. That's right. Do you know what, um, you know what he's uh, after, Pidge, though, Nicky? Well, he's just a... Really? He's just a Strong mid, strong sort of in out yeah, midfielder. Tall. He's um, what's his name? Uh, Cripps kind of size. Yeah, but a bit, and a, he, bit and he's got a bit stronger build, I think. Yeah, he's a bit stronger built, um, but he's also got that little bit of speed to him as well, which is very nice when you've got a player of that size. Yeah, and also just said the digressing. Uh, Jumbo Prince in the chat asked. Would the Crows instead of Billy and Port's NGA Lucky Jones at nine? You bet they will if he's absolutely. If somebody else hasn't, if somebody else hasn't already done it. God, yeah. yeah. If he's still there, well, yeah, I'd be surprised if someone hadn't hadn't bid a bit earlier than nine actually on Lucky I, Jones. I think I, th I think somebody will. Yeah, Gee, you, you, well, you know, watch the finals, and he is a fantastic player, and yeah. uh, he's not he's not one of these overgrown kids who are playing above himself. He's playing against men, he's, and uh, oh, he's he actually. See, looks... I actually think he's a bit of a man child, Mac, personally. Well, you can say that, but he's actually playing against men now. So, and he will develop further. He's, I mean, mm. that one, this isn't the end of the road for him. So, I think he's going to be a very good player. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Um, and. Look, I wouldn't mind betting Hawthorne uh, chuck, a, chuck a bit at him. Um, Braden Campbell's the other one, the Sydney's uh, NGA. Um, but yes. uh, he's sort of, there's so many mixed opinions about where he might go. Uh, obviously, Sydney um, with pick, um, was it? Uh, pick three. Um, 
Yeah, you'd assume that they'd uh, they'd take him there. No, uh, I mean that, that's one of the reasons why it's going to be hard to prize the pick away from Sydney. What they would like to do is to pick uh, uh, a gun up with pick three, and he comes along afterwards, and they just use up their other draft picks and just cumulatively make up the points that's necessary to get him. Mm. So well, that, would, that would be whether, their. Makes you, I wonder whether uh, North Melbourne would take the chance and bid on Campbell. Not really, because they are they are absolutely desperate for a forward. And they, they they need um, McDonald or they need Tilthorpe. I don't think either of those two will get past them. Well, what about Adelaide bidding on uh, Campbell? <laughs> We're going to end up with pick three. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't be, because we'd be left with him, I think, at pick one. Yeah. And he's not a pick one. He's not a pick one. No, so no, he's not. Yeah. Or uh, well, interesting. Uh, let's have a quick chat about our delistees before we wind it up. Um, a couple probably not unexpected and one or two interesting ones. Of course, we'd say goodbye to Miles Paholke and uh, Jordan Gallucci. And who's the other one? Who's the other one we got rid of? We got rid of Crocker. three. Uh, ben Crocker, Crocker, that's right. The um, three that we predicted. Yeah, I don't think it's any surprise at all about Crocker. Well, Gallucci's a bit of a that, surprise. I, me, I would have liked to have kept, I would have probably uh, not given McKay an extension, although he was, he was, they may have better players with he, he's captain in the in the twos or something like that, but, uh, and he's just a relief that comes in if somebody's injured, but, uh, and he, I thought last year was very close to his best season, actually. Um, and he's, and he's certainly, in terms of character, he's a, a very good individual, McKay. But you don't just keep him on character. Um, I well, think they Gallucci did. They did. Uh, if you listen to the, if sorry to interrupt you, Macca, but if you listen to the comments from Reed, it was a reward for the influence that he has over the youngsters. Well, that's was, a bit different than being of, being of good character, uh, influencing other players. If, if he uh, if he actually works for the other works for the other young young players, then that's a good thing. Um, I'm not, a, you know, he, never. He's been the, one of the most maligned footballers in in a, any football club ever. But I reckon in the recent years, I think he's been better than the years when he probably deserved to be maligned. I mean, in his early days, I was the one that was sure he had pictures somebody with a goat and shouldn't, you know, nobody wanted to see. Um, but I would say that, you know, his last couple of years, well, certainly his last year was good. Gallucci uh, got all the ability in the world. I don't know that he's got all the desire in the world, though. That's that's the biggest problem there with Gallucci. For hulking, yeah. too slow. Uh, he does get 10 to 12 possessions a game, and he does it very well when he gets it. And that's just not enough in an AFL game. And he had to. He definitely had to go. And Benny Crocker was. He was sort of a licorice all sort that we had that we could put it pop it a few spots if needs be. And we think we've got players coming through that uh, we don't need that licorice all sort anymore. So um, when you when you boil it all down, McKay probably is the right one to stay. And. Fien and I were really keen on Crocker from what we saw in the preseason, but then once the main season started, he just seemed lost, um, which he was didn't, really disappointing. He didn't seem to have that same aggression at the ball, did he, Nick? Uh, no. He seemed a bit tentative uh, to actually get involved, whereas in the preseason he was uh, taking a few more chances and presenting a little bit more often, and uh, you know there was it looked yeah. like there was a bit to work with. Um, but yeah, the really games nice that he did into play. The forward line. Yeah, exactly. Well, so it's well, a, it's a bit unfortunate. I, really for Bain, I think. Yeah, I, I think we're right. He did, he was good in the preseason. I thought we had something on our hands, but I, I think his biggest problem when he when he did get opportunities to play in the A's is that he played as if he was not the player. In other words, he had to give deference to the other players. Yeah, he yeah. Just rather yeah, than he was picking saying, up the scraps oh, the all the time. Yeah, and, and instead of saying I'm the man and I'm going to go and get the ball, it's not. I don't reckon he's lacking ability but no. I just don't think he t- applied himself as you have to when you're really desperate to stay in the side. And yeah. well, I yeah. think it's I think it showed that when there's that step up of to that AFL pressure, he doesn't quite 
have it, no. which is a pity. Yeah, anyway, I, I think really that... like. Uh, I really like the look of him. Anyhow, I think we, we've done it pretty right with what we got rid of. I would have also, um, Ben Davis, I would have paid Ben out for next year and to just opened up a spot because Ben's not going to make it. Well, what are you basing that on, Mac? Well, they obviously don't think he's going to make it. We had plenty of opportunity to play him last year and he got one game. He got Different one... coach. Different coach. He got one, no, he got one game in 2018, uh, sorry, 2000, what year were in 2020? One year, he Come got on, one game in 2019 and one, year, uh, one game in 2020. And, and then he got injured and he was out for the rest of the year. And he was talked up continuously in the preseason by our head coach. Continuously talked up by the head coach. So uh, I'll wait and see what happens next year when he's not injured. He will do nothing, Nicky. That's my opinion, and I'm going to stick to it because I, I don't rate him at all. Um, On what basis, Mac? Uh, That's, I guess, what I'm interested in. So, look, I've seen him play in, in the SAFL uh, in, in times gone past and mm. never have really rated him. Um, he, he's got blinding speed, blinding mm. speed. But that's, that's what he's got, full stop. Yeah, I think, it might, boil, I think it might boil down to... Uh, him or McAdam, and I think McAdam's definitely gone past him. Um, oh, way past him. You know, uh, I still think Ben Davis could play in that Tom Lynch role. I think the thing working against That's... that is, is that still a role? Is that still a role? Uh, or yeah, is that, that a role of a it, bygone that's era? Not yeah, quite but, the but, same role as it was in the past, mate. Right? No. I, exactly. I, it, it's a... Yeah, so I'm interested to see how they use him because that's what he was being trained at. That's how he was playing in the SNFL. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, because when you watch the SNFL, you have to understand that we were playing the AFL game plan against teams that were playing an SNFL game plan. Yeah. But and my point... so certain, certain roles don't work as well. Yeah, but my point yeah, is, Nikki, not... I don't know in modern football whether that lead-up role is still uh... – is still uh, yeah, something I'm, that's worthwhile. Uh, we've seen other other teams play agree. the game quite differently, um, and it worked yeah, for us when we had a working uh, forward line. Uh, it was it was fantastic to have that gut running high half forward that could just go up and back and up and back. It, it worked for us perfectly when we were going catching teams over the back. Um, but the way the game's being played at the moment, I don't know, and I think that's why Tom Lynch struggles now. Because you'll find that Tom Lynch has to push all the way down through to half back now uh, to get the. And agate. that's why He's... we changed it. Yeah, Put well, and that's what I'm. Week. Well, and that's what I'm saying, Nick. I don't know whether yeah. there's a spot, a role for Benny, in that sense, and the role that he would have taken is probably being covered by Shane McAdam quite comfortably at the moment. So I mean, yeah, I think that... Ben I agree. Ben probably benefited from having a year left on his contract. Um, so that's probably why he's still with us. I, look, I'm going to disagree with you on Gallucci, Macca. I, I, it was time for DMAC to go. There is no value having David McKay on the list in 2021. None. What's none whatsoever. Not one ounce of value. You can't. Oh, look, you I'm can't. not going to fight you to the death on it because you know I, I thought he would go. But, I, I will uh, fight I'll, anyone I'll, to the death on this. And, and I'll, are you going to fight yourself? Yeah, I'll, I'll happily. Um, <laughs> Right, Nikki. <laughs> no, 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 because when we talked about delistings a couple of podcasts ago, when we talked about everything else, we actually agreed, and you were the one who pushed it to say that DMAC deserves another year. I know he we're does. But... What we were getting rid of and, and who to play there. You actually but said I... we should keep him. And we kept you... him, and now he's yeah. wrong. Right. No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, Nikki. I'll tell you why, Nikki, because <laughs> I didn't expect, no, I didn't expect to keep Kieran Strawn. Right, Kieran yeah, Strong to me was a D listy, and that's where there was a you, spot you there did for D. Yeah, you right? did say but, that. But but with Strong still on the list, which I still can't work out, um, uh, <laughs> I, I just am not in favour of keeping D Mac on the list ahead of uh, a kid who, let's face it, we drafted in the first round. If, uh, Jumbo Prince in the chat makes an excellent point. The 2016 draft, Gallucci, Paholki, Himmelberg, Davis, Signorello. The only one with a with a sniff at the moment is is the Burke, you know, out of, out of that draft year. It was horrific, and I would think that Gallucci, 
probably deserved, and we may rookie him up, I don't know, but I think he might go back to Victoria. Um, Collingwood. Yeah, Collingwood would be the, the possible one there. But uh, I, I just think he had enough attributes that we needed to give him a decent run. Oh, I have no doubt about you're right. It's it's not about his uh, attributes. He's got great attributes, and that's why when we drafted him in the first place, he's got beautiful disposal, either right or left leg. Uh, mm. He's got pace to burn. Um, it's not ability. It's attitude. And yeah. the, the, apparently he presented himself um, unfit at, in, the, in the pre-season situation. Um, this is last year I'm talking about. Um and over the break, etc. But um, when did when did he, I'm trying to work out when did he actually do his league, his ACL? Pre-season. Didn't pre-season. He? Yeah, pre-season. Yeah, apparently he did, but he presented himself to the start of pre-season training in poor shape. Apparently, um, this I'm only going by what I've read. So, um, but he he's so inconsistent on the field. You like know, you see him and you know something quite brilliant. Absolutely quite brilliant. And then you won't see him again for 10, 15 minutes. So well, if that's what a... happens when you played in the bloody graveyard at half forward. No, he, he, I think he had opportunities on the wing, didn't he? Not, not very often. No, mostly, no, mostly he not played half forward. The thing that I liked about Jordan the most is that he straight-lined the ball. And for a lad of his yeah. uh, stature, that was a very, very good quality. He had, sp- he had speed, um, mm-hmm. but... Uh, as well as being pacey, I never I saw him take a few really solid hits, uh, and he never deviated off the line once. Now, a, a, a player who's that. not a player who's not committed uh, won't do that. They won't put their body on the line. But uh, Jordan, I think, uh, is quite willing out in the field to put his foot on uh, body out on the line, and. Uh, I'm sure there was some stuff going on behind the scenes. I was, there was obviously some questions about his commitment and application to training. Um, yes. But gee whiz, um, he didn't get much of a run. Did not get much of a run. No, and look, he may turn out to be a very good player for somebody else. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, they, so that's a call they made. Um, I wouldn't have been upset if it had been the other way around if Gallucci had stayed and McKay had gone. But... Um, uh, the club obviously know a little bit more than we do, and they must have their reasons for doing it. Yeah. So uh, just to round off, um, you know, I, I guess it's pretty laid down as there this year in terms of who we think we'll take. Um, are we still in the Hollands camp, assuming the draft order stays as it is? Uh, not one. the Hollands camp, the uh, McDonald's camp. I don't know. I really don't know whether what the club's thinking when they whether they're taking McDonald or whether they're taking Tilthorpe. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they took Tilthorpe at one. What do you reckon, Nick? I don't know. <laughs> and, and and this is – I hate this time of year because of this because there's so many bloody variables and the stuff you kind of get reported on, I don't quite trust – um, mm. I, I think from the little bit of vision that I've seen and listening to you, because I know you've seen more, I, to me, McDonald's sounds the better option than Tilthorpe. Um, but of course there's going to be that push for Tilthorpe because he's South Australian. Um, but everything that's been said about McDonald and the way that other clubs are, how keen they are on him, I think that's the way we will go. Well, if you look at his highlights, Nicky, uh, he's definitely probably the number one player. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you watch the boy play and he he can take overhead marks. He's a brilliant leader and he is very, very quick and he's ball handling very good at ground level as well. So there's nothing not to like about the boy, nothing not to like about him at all. He's got, And he probably is the number one. It's just... Whether the Adelaide Footy Club goes safe and thinks, uh, well, Tilthorpe's here, um, he, he's also going to be the relief ruck as well as, as a forward, and then McDonald won't be that situation. So, um, but I, yeah, no, I, I'm changing my. I think we will probably take McDonald. Um, 
and I'm going by a comment that um, O'Driscoll made in an interview, Fiend, and you probably remember this comment. Yeah. That uh, the, the, he said the football club would try and keep both of the two boys together. So if they're going to keep them together, that means they're going to take McDonald. Well, I think nine is a is a pretty good spot for O'Driscoll. Um, there's no WA clubs ahead of us at nine, uh, which would have been the danger um, in terms of that pick. Uh, but we've got no real threats uh, ahead of us uh, at that pick. Look, I um, I think if Himmelberg hadn't have come on in the second half of uh, the last season, we may well have been tempted to take um, Tilthorpe um, just because of the manner in which Riley plays uh, and his attributes and his ability to be second ruck. Logan is an out-and-out forward. Um, he's a modern forward. And he's, he's, I think what, what put the icing on the cake for Logan McDonald was his um, was his results in a couple of the key tests at the Combine recently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're talking about a kid who could be uh, um, Nick Revolt, Mark II. In terms of his endurance uh, and his his ability to to run his opponent off off their legs, um, you know he'll never be a pack marker. Um, but I don't think the game's being played that way anymore. I don't think you'd no. You know we went through the stats uh, about how many contested marks are taken in the forward lines, how many goals result from contested marks inside forward fifty, um, and it's not a lot, not a lot. There's a lot more ground ball goals. There's a lot more lead-up goals. Um, so I think you do need height in your forward line as a bail- bailout option, which is why I think Richmond was so hell-bent on getting Tom Lynch. But when you think about what Tom Lynch has done for Richmond over the over the, the course of the 2020 season, you know, he hasn't had a huge goal-scoring year. Uh, he hasn't taken big, you know, pack-busting marks or anything like that. But he's just provided another option that has meant that the opposition have to cover him up. Um and I could see uh, Himmelberg and McDonald uh, teaming up really well in in a very similar manner to uh, how Revolt and Tom Lynch uh, team up uh, for the uh, for the Tigers. So I think it's McDonald, uh, but you know what? I'm a bit like you, Mac. It's, Riley's a South Aussie boy. Uh, there'd be no harm in taking him at one. He's going to have a very good AFL career. And it might be the South Aussie that uh, that gets him over the line. Yep, that, that is, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? That the in our minds we're thinking that there's two tall players sitting there uh, vying for the number one position, and they may will go one and two. And there was an interesting video by oh, I can never remember his name, the guy that's. He's got a big footy as well. Nightmare. Nightmare. Um, Chris and he did a, Yeah. He, he did a video on the success rate of taking tools in the first two, in the first, well, I think it was the first three positions. And there was a pretty big failure rate, actually. A pretty big failure rate. And, Do you know what, uh, Mac? I don't, I don't think you can... I think looking at drafts historically is is fraught with danger in the AFL because the a the game has evolved quite substantially in the last 20 years and b it's not a big enough data set you don't have a big enough data set there are so many other variables with regards to the quality of those tools uh, compared to the quality of the tools in this draft for example um, you know the 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 game style that was being employed i mean a few years ago we were talking mega floods you're not going to get a you know a a forward outperforming in a in a space where the whole ground is or the whole 30 uh, 20 odd players from each team are in the forward 50 of one one team are you so i mean there's lots of variables and i just i don't think i think you have to take each draft and each player on its merits um and and just to add to that it's also did nightmare then compare the team they went to the list that they were going into, what else, who, what type of players were in their way, the development that's available at that particular team, because some teams are better at development than others, injuries. As you said, there's way too many variables to compare a, um, those type of players in a draft. 
No, I'm very, and it's a very good point you, you raised it, Nicky. Uh, but I just thought I'd th- throw that out there. Um, yeah. The other thing too, Mac, to consider there is that there's far more midfielders taken at the pointy end of the draft and I don't think his analysis was actually accurate in the sense that as a, as a proportion of all the midfielders, how many midfielders haven't made it? And if you looked at that number as a, as a proportion of the total, I think you'd find that it actually lines up a lot closer. Yeah, yeah, that, that's probably right too. Uh, well, just to say we take McDonald then, how do you see the structure of our forward line? Do, do we still play Hibbelberg? Oh, absolutely. You, you got, I think we have to. You got, you got the Berg. Uh, the, the one that's in a bit of strife, I think it's Darcy Fogarty. Um, well, that's, yeah. where we go. that's where I was going to. You've got... Because Walker will probably get me played. Um, I, I disagree, but he will probably be played. And well, he shouldn't uh, be played. Okay. Walker shouldn't be played. But I bet he is. Yeah, I, I don't think Logan's in our round one team next year. Um, okay. You know, no. he could he could be he could be, but I don't think so. Um, I mean, we brought Fisher in. If he was. We brought Fisher in uh, pretty early on in the piece, um, another a key tool. Um, and let's not for, forget, McCasey's got some uh, tricks as a forward as well. Um, <clears throat> but for my McAfee. Fogarty is the one, yeah, McCasey, McCasey, whatever. Um, <laughs> you've been drinking again tonight, Mac? Same answer, could have. Yeah, could have been, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so look, Fogarty's the one I think that's in in strife. I look, Walker might start if if Logan's not ready or whatever. Um, but I, the the longer that Walker plays, the less chance Darcy Fogarty has of having an AFL career, in my opinion. And I just think Taylor needs to just get the hell out of there. Um, so, but whether that happens or not is another thing. But having said that, Darcy once given the keys has to actually own it um otherwise uh, it's it's starting to become a little bit difficult to see what Fogarty actually brings to the table macker um other than you know the odd beefy hit you know he's not taking overhead marks he's not getting a lot of touches he's not presenting a hell of a lot um what does it what does he give well I think he's capable of giving a lot, quite frankly. I th- and I've said this before, and I, I know you don't 100% agree with me, but I think he needs to get uh, rid, uh, rid of a lot of weight and he's got to turn himself into a running machine that can actually do something. And at the moment, um, he does some good uh, physical things, but that's not, that's not going to win us games. We really need him to be getting a lot of the ball. And the only way he's going to do that is to make himself much more mobile, go to the right spots, uh, and be able to keep going all game. So, uh, as I said, I would be hiring a professional uh, fitness ch- uh, bloke to work with him. We've got a professional to to... fitness bloke, Matt Ars. No, I mean his own, just his own. Oh, come uh, so, on. No, worked out. I reckon there's a bloody good footballer uh, resting inside that body, and I'd like to see it come out. I think there's a lazy footballer resting in that body. And uh, I think he'll do very well at SANFL level. I, I, I've, I'm off the Darcy Fogarty train, unfortunately. He, Look, he I'm had not to saying it tr- wrong. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I said I'd like to see that. I'm not saying we're going to get it. I just said I'd like to see it. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, so in answer to your question, uh, J- um, Jumbo Prince in the chat saying that uh, McDonald has to start... Yes and no. Um, look, he's obviously played waffle, so he's played against men. It's a different step up again uh, to AFL. I wouldn't be opposed to him pl- starting off first round. Uh, we're in it on our list, uh, but I wouldn't mind getting eased in uh, the same way we eased Fish in. Uh, what I don't want to see is him languish in the twos for a second longer than he has to at the expense of someone like Taylor Walker or Darcy Fogarty. Agree. Well, I also agree with that too. Yeah. So, look, it's going to be very interesting, um, a bit to play out. But by the same token, I think I, my interest for the, 
for the last probably three months has been more about next year than this year. I think this year is fairly obvious. Um, of the other choices, uh, Nathan O'Driscoll provides a good... Uh, a, I, th I think he'll end up being a bit like Simon Goodwin, to be honest with you. Uh, that type of player. Um, you know, we might go for him. Caleb Poulter, we've seen him in the twos. If anyone wants to have a look at Caleb... Um, have a look on the Crowcast YouTube channel. I've uploaded the under-18 under All-Stars game there, uh, and he goes all right. Um, you know, we've talked about a couple of others as well. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's it's building. It's it's building as a list, uh, but I, I'm very interested to see what Nix does with this young group uh, next year um, because there's a couple of players in there... Uh, Tex being one, uh, Daniel Talia being another, um, even Rory Sloan to a degree. Uh, we can't put DMAC in that group because apparently he's in the form of his life at 32. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so, um, but how yeah, long... Good, good young lad, how, how long before we uh, How long before we turn those players over will be key, I think. We've only got about uh, 10, I think, 10, 10 to 12 senior-type players uh, in, amongst our whole squad now. Yeah, it, which is probably number... enough. Yeah, for where, where we're at and what we need to do going forward, that I agree, that that's enough. But I think most of them need to spend a bit more time in the SNFL than they do in the AFL. I'd like to see okay. a bit more player management, you know, a bit more rotating. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't have much opportunity last season. It was a bit of a ridiculous season. But, you know, I'm thinking about blokes like Tommy Lynch. I, I don't want to see Tom Lynch play 18 games, you know, maybe 10 games, rotating mm -hmm. in and out, give Benny Davis a run or, or rotate through with Shane McAdam, depending on who we're playing. Um, you know, there's, there's a role for Tommy Lynch, but not every week. Uh, Tex, I think we could use the same way, you know, maybe him and Darcy sort of have a have a run of three or four games each um, or, you know, depending on how Tex is going physically, uh, maybe he just comes in every every four weeks or so. Um, even Daniel Talia, I think, you know, Daniel, by the end of each season, looked like he's been run over by a truck. Uh, and we all That's know... That's exactly what he's like at the end of each game. Yeah, well, and we all know that he works really hard to get himself up every week, but... You know, Geordie Butts has got to start getting more game time. Uh, Fisher's uh, got a season under his belt now as well. Um, we don't have Kyle Warrell. Hardigan anymore. We've got Worrell that needs games in him uh, because you talk about flight risks. There's, you know, there's persistent whispers about Worrell um, and we need to get him on board. So I'll be very interested to see how Matty Nix and the uh, selection panel handle managing a, a young list in transition. Um and the last thing we want with the draft hand that we've got this year is to pick up a couple of lads inside the top 10 and then just leave them languishing in the twos. Yeah, I 100% agree with that, Fane. Uh, um, you certainly don't want to play them before their time, but you don't have to wait till they're absolutely 100% ready. You have no. to, well, a classic um, one of that is Lockie Scholl. Physically, yeah. Lockie Scholl oh. looked like he should have been playing under 15. Correct. Look, we were advocating that he should be picked for about eight, six to eight weeks before yeah. he did. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was saying that the year before. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, um, Will Hamill, another one, you know, and obviously uh, Will was unfortunate with a with a sling tackle. But, um, you know, those those kids, they just want the agate. And, they, and we drafted them for a reason. We drafted them because they've got talent and ability. And I think the one thing that the Crows are not good at is showing faith in youth. Um, and I think that has to think, change culturally. I'd say we, we haven't seen that previously, but I think from what we saw this year with Nix, we did see that change because we had Schoenberg come uh, in. At times, Nick. Yeah, but one, once he was in, he was hard to bloody get out once he was in. But we saw Scholl, we saw Hamill. Um, it, I, to me, there, there was that step forward. It wasn't the full one-metre step that I wanted to see. But it was that little bit of that step forward, which was a lot more proactive around younger players. So, like you, I'm very keen to see what's going to happen next year with an entirely new coaching panel around Knicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Massive, massive. And, it's going to be to me, massive improvement. I'm actually looking forward to next year. I can, I, it just feels like there's a, that step forwards are going to be taken that we want to be taken. Yep, yeah, you still have to be realistic, Nikki, and and realise that we've got still got a lot of younguns and a lot of learners and all the rest. Oh of yeah, it, and that they're going to have to. They'll have a game plan that they form. Uh, they'll formulate, and that's got to be learnt so it becomes instinctive rather than trying to remember what the game plan is. And that all takes time. But um, having said that, uh, it won't be anything like the the start of the 2020 year, which was horrendous to say the least. Um, so I, I think we, you know, we're capable. We'll be capable of winning five, six games next year, and we might even do better than that. But um, I've, you, It'd be unreasonable to expect them to do much more than that. Yeah, I still think we end up bottom four. Um, there's a bit of water yes. to go under the bridge before we have that and conversation. You know that's okay because that's yeah. where we're at. Totally happy because that's part of the, the rebuild process. Actually, one lad that I haven't mentioned in, in terms of drafting, which uh, I, this is a lad that I've seen play right from his juniors, and uh, he is rated quite highly as uh, one of the South Australian boys, is Corey Durden. Um, I've watched him play. He, he is quick. He can kick beautifully both feet. He can take a brilliant mark. He can tackle. He can kick goals. He's one uh, short shortfall failing. It's the fact that he's short. He's only going. To, he's only about five eight, and uh, he's been playing uh, snaffle at uh, central for a couple of years at league level, and. Uh, he 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 would make a uh, fantastic forward uh, the role that Stingle plays. He would play, but he also can be a midfielder as well. And he's I would love him somehow to get on our list, whether even if it's as a rookie. But I, I just feel he'll, he'll get picked somewhere um, along the line. That little guy that plays for the, the bulldog with the helmet. What's his name again? Caleb Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> He's got every attribute and more than Caleb Daniel. He's faster than Caleb Daniel. He can make a bed, take a better overhead mark. He's got every attribute. And uh, but the biggest problem that will be, of course, is that we'll be wanting to take tools and mids, and a player like him will go probably end up at another club. But I, I just I'd love to see him on our list because he would definitely end up in our team along. Maybe not straight away, but he would definitely end up in the team. He'd be a very good player because he, he's got no weaknesses in terms of his football. Well, on that note, I think we'd better wind up. Um, what's going to happen with the Crowcast for the rest of the season? We're going to have a, a bit of time off now um, and we will get together on the 6th of December uh, for a preview of uh, the draft. Um, there may have been some pick swaps happen between now and then. Otherwise, it'll just be a bit more of an in-depth preview and a look at some of the uh, some of the players that are probably going to go, you know, in the top half a dozen. Um, and then, of course, our final show will be the uh, the weekend after the draft, where we just wrap everything up um, and uh, say thank you to everyone and go and watch some cricket for a little while. So, uh, no podcast next week. Um, what's next week? That's the twenty. 20- second and then no podcast the following week which is the 29th and then three weeks time we'll be reconvening on the 6th of december um so stay safe everyone until then uh thanks nikki and maka always a good time talking with you guys i'll just say aflw started training again yay aflw started training again that's awesome Uh, (laughs) (laughs) which means football's back all right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone who joined us on chat, uh, joined us on YouTube and Twitch. Not everyone. And we'll see you on the 7th. See you Not guys. Not all.